show me what you've got. Hi there, everyone. I am Mike Levin on not March 17th, but Thursday, March 18th, 2021. And when last we left off, I do believe I did, in fact, show you uh, what I've got. And I did sort of a top to bottom review of what is becoming my scaffolding or template code for every project moving forward in the foreseeable future. So I've got some significant motivation to, to get this right, or at least to stage it to grow and evolve correctly. And the important things to see here is that since NVDev is going to be exporting this and turning it into a package, only the parts that have the export comment at the top become part of the Python module, the .py file that's exported uh, called core. Now it's time to do some housekeeping because I like really plan on using this thing. And I don't like my command being called core. I like it being yet another instance of whatever the package is, S-E-O-M-L. So there should be a seoml.py output now whenever I output this. That means actually one of the things I want to do is to go into terminal and to uh, clean up a little after myself. And you'll see I drop right into GitHub now in my profile, my bash login. I put an extra line to make sure that's the case. I don't have to CD there all the time. And from there I can just CD directly into my project directories. And one more down, because you'll remember that's the convention of both PyPy and NVDev. And if I ls in there, I'll see the core. Now I'm going to git remove core.py, because I'm sure I have this under, oh, it's a force removal. It has modifications, yeah, OK, git rm hyphen f. So we force the removal of core.py. Git diff will probably show that it's been removed. Actually, a git status is a clearer way to show that it's been uh, removed. Deleted files, core.py. That is, in fact, what I want to see. So we gen regenerate that file now with a NB, NB dev uh, build uh, lib lib still getting it into my fingers still getting it into my mess muscle memory now if we ls there there is in fact an seo ml see that wasn't there before git add seo ml because anything you know that's a pretty big change i've changed what the package being exported from this whole system is being called and in fact, I should make this file name match it too. So I will, I'll lose, I'll, I'll lose my git history if I do it that way. So I'll close it and exit. There's probably a better way. Terminal session, have a terminal session going. I definitely want to shut down the one. No, I don't have a turn. That's just a label. Okay, so that's out of memory. I'll close that. It'll bring me this automatic tab. It always wants at least one tab there, but at least it's out of memory, and I can CD one directory higher, and I can git move 00, zero core.py to 00. zero. I like, I'll like keep that naming convention, uh, seoml.py. IPY and B. Okay. Git status. We should see a rename. That's good. Uh, deleted a new file. That's all correct. That's great stuff. And that is part of my housekeeping. I can load this back up in a tab. You'll also find it as a running kernel session here. This is not enough room for what's being shown, I guess, is what's going on there. And now the real thing I wanted to show today, I'll get rid of that again, 
There is a coding sky style called don't repeat yourself. And they would completely choke on a complex piece of code like this being fundamentally repeated all but for the MKD function. The MKD function, which is made right here with this one line lambda trick that I covered pretty well in the last video. So the thing that's bothering me, this is like intuitive nagging stuff. It seems to me that if the only difference between these two functions are that MKD, I should be able to put this out here and then just redefine what MKD is based on which path it went through. So it's already being defined there. That's all we need to do there. However, on this lower part, I think it belongs right here, just above the, the comment, kind of like we're doing it here, but I do an import as well. So all we need is MKD equals, okay? Now you'll remember my magic incantations to make sure I remember list comprehension. So when you have a list, one, two, three, when you want to turn it into a list comprehension and be able to do something to each element of that list, it's x for x in. And suddenly that's a magic list comprehension where you can apply functions and stuff to that first instance. Shame is the case with the lambdas. It's just that lambda is such a weird word and it's easy to get tripped up on. So there's a similar x for x in, but it's not really x for x in. It's lambda x colon x. Now that will just return x, but I do believe that the uh, behavior that we want, it has to go through a function here. I'm going to have to print x. So it's almost the simplest lambda function you can do. You feed x. So this is a function called mkd. You feed it a value and it prints that value. And it's basically it. It's a pass through function, anonymous not so anonymous because it has a name now, but a pass-through function. And it can be used either uh, through either path. And that's good. I've significantly reduced the amount of code that needs to be in here because we can now delete that, right? Much prettier. It's a good cl code cleanup thing, uh, but we have to test it. We can test it by running this code block and you'll see that I have an H1 and an H2 there, so it's already tested, but for the sake of explicitness, H1, hello, H2, world, right? So there's a slightly bigger hello than world, H1, H2. You'll be like, oh, well, you already have H headlines and stuff, right? What's this? Well, this is a markdown block. Its type is uh, is of type markdown. Oh, there it is, markdown. And you can see that these other blocks are of code type code, so or of block type code. So that's Python code in there. It's markdown in here. They're they're used for different things. I'll be putting documentation of the system in markdown blocks, but I'll be putting output as code blocks start and what they're doing and when they are done in my H1 and H2. So that's really good. That was a nice piece of cleanup, but it's not quite done because we have to test it under NVDev. These headlines have different behaviors based on whether uh, these display and markdown wrappers are being used or whether it's just the raw you know, output being printed. For consistency sake, I think I'm going to put X's in for A's. Still all the same code. It's doing exactly the same thing. I do that save. I go over here. I do one of those nvdev uh, build libs again. Build lib singular. And now I should be able to invoke with the Python C Python, I should be able to invoke my new M, uh, SEO ML.py. It's going to require args. Args aren't going to be there. Oh, look at that. No such file or directory. Oh, I'm not one more level down. CD SEO ML. Same command. Right. Okay. So required arguments. It tells me that 
um, usage file and description. Okay, so SEOML hyphen file uh, test.txt and description. Nothing special. All right, and so there we have our proof that the H1 comes out with a single hash and an H2 comes out with a double hash. So we'll be essentially inserting Markdown into our log files and anything else that uses the program output, which my scheduling system does. I use program output and just drop it into log files. So it's really nice to be able to search on things that have hash mark, some known headline, uh, double hash mark, some other known subheadline, and you can trace through the, you know, the duns and stuff to make sure that each function is done. So that's, and that's a real nice little touch for me. And you can see the kind of uh, code cleanup that I did here. This, this long, ugly line only has to appear once, and it just has two different behaviors based on the definition of the MKD function as it goes down through here, and it identifies itself as being inside IPython or Jupyter here, or it identifies itself as being a command line utility here. And either way, you're gonna get your, your nice headlines that we can use all throughout. So there's other things I'd like to do at this point. Um, the main thing to show you here is I mentioned PEP8 violation. I'm doing all this so that I don't have PEP8 violations, so that I don't, so that I don't have to do a, a line like in from from headlines import star, or alternatively from headlines import, and then I have to name them each, h1, h2, and so on. And it gets to be ugly and not the way I like to do it. And it has an extra file dependency, and it's not standard library. So I just uh, put a line like this. But when we have our linters at the top, like I'm using the NB black code linter, we put that in memory, OK? And now if we were to run this code block, there's going to be a little bit of restyling. And I know because this goes out to line 98, we're going to get a little line wrapping here. Not too bad, not too bad. It turned a one line thing into four lines, but that already starts to undo some of the uh, beauty that I uh, am trying to achieve in here. And I do believe it's, it's fair for me to keep this as a one line. So probably my next video is I'm going to teach you how to do uh, some of the things that are at the bottom of my uh, ideas thing. You probably see my journal where I keep uh, at the top of these entries these idea things and to do. So I can just go to ideas, hit shift eight, and that'll pop me to my ideas. And these are all my ideas for my different um, videos coming up. and. Uh, I actually have it under to do right now. The difference between git cloning and pip install. When you git clone, you can go into packages like NB Black and make your own thing. However, it's often not worth doing because of import issues. And it's sometimes worth just finding where your site package directory is and going in there and doing a quick edit, knowing that you know you'll have that until you do your next pip update of that location. And that means, whoops, that means finding your location, finding site packages, because it could be a bunch of different places. The issues of legacy virtual ENVs versus Python 3 VNVs versus Conda. And they all have different location for site packages. And it's not always site packages. Under Conda, it's just packages. So I'm tempted to, to make that uh, this video right now because I... Um, want to alter the linting in order to allow up to, I don't know, a hundred characters or so. I mean, there's some accessibility issues here, but this black linter, which works really super well, is also billed as uncompromising PEP8. So it currently doesn't support these config files that let you make these exceptions to the PEP8 rules for things like line rules. 
So maybe I'll do one Hail Mary. This is a really good video. I got across the code cleanup I wanted to do. And then this last thing, because I want to teach people really good habits of putting in uh, code linting. So by doing this, you're just automatically going to be code linting on every line you execute. You can't see much of it going on because my code is pretty clean. However, we're going to try and uh, do a Hail Mary play at changing this behavior. And I guess that'll give me a reason to use this uh, latest journal entry because there's some interesting things to figure out. All we have to do is edit a py file in a site packages location corresponding to our Python execution environment. And that is not always the easiest thing because execution environments are like, this is so all over the place. And I'm just going to have to use some of my known knowledge. And you're just going to have to take my word for it about knowing where to look and stuff. And I drop into these terminals all the time. And I try and keep myself inside my GitHub directory, which honestly is um, under a virtual ENV, my Pi 38 virtual ENV. So any dependencies I install are going to be gathered in here. But this terminal has nothing to do with the code, the way the code is being executed here. This is Anaconda under Windows. Anaconda under Windows is a different story. And its story begins, I'll open a new terminal. In fact, I'm going to open a new Ubuntu terminal still because the tools I like to use are Linux ones, even though the paths are to Windows locations, right? I know that in this directory, which is my Windows users directory, so I only have to cd dot dot, I am going to find a directory called Anaconda3 because I did a local install for this user. Right? Inside of there is a whole bunch of stuff. Learn to resize your terminals a lot, clear and ls, and if you don't like your ls, you can make it uh, smaller, you can make it bigger, and when you do that, and you re-ls, it will adapt to your new screen size. So if you want three column ls because you think it all fits, which it does, look at that. That's nice. It's a nice way of looking at the files. I can do a clear first and then that ls because that'll just show me what's in uh, my anaconda directory. All this weird stuff here. should probably learn more about that and some interesting looking directories here right i mean i know which ones i want to go into but it's worth pointing out that if we were using the conda repo it would all be under packages pk gs i believe that's where conda install does its thing now site packages traditionally installs in a Unix or Linux type path, which is going to try to be reproduced here for some file compatibility, file location compatibility between Windows and Linux is my suspicion. So we can CD into libs and do an LS, right? Okay. I, I do believe we're on the right path. There's Python 3.lib and there's uh, Python 3.8.lib. If that's not the location, let me just scan down here because I could be wrong. I'm not thrilled about those .lib extensions on it. There's a bin I can look in. I'm not using a deliberate ENVs on the Anaconda side, so that rules that one out. And none of these should be it because they're the upper and lower case, the Pascal case or the uh, Camel case of... Uh, Windows, everything Python and Linuxy is going to look like this. So we can cd cd into Python three dot lib ls. Oh, interesting. Ls hyphen la. Those are not directories. Wrong place. Cd dot dot ls. Is there a site packages in here? I bet there might be. Element of p. 
we want to cite packages. We'll Google. We'll go to my journal. We'll jump to the very bottom. Yeah, I thought I made a note of that. Anaconda 3, lib, site packages. Okay. CD lib, singular, ls. Oh, a lot of stuff in there. A lot of .py files in there. Great case of re-lsing to try and see what everything is and get a nice clear view of everything that's in there. And there is going to be a site packages in there. Site packages right there. CD site packages. LS. Oh, more stuff. It's getting quite small. In order to see everything, you have to go very small. But you know, you can get everything on screen if you wanted to. Clearly, we don't want to do that. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm looking for, so I'm going to ls only things that begin with black. And we do have some locations, black.py, black info, installer. So this is inside site packages. There's a black.py and a black d.py. And a dist info. I believe I need to do an ls hyphen la to see what the heck these things are. There you go. We've got all files, no directories. Oh, these two up here aren't even distribution info. So interesting. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, hack this the way I was looking forward to. How interesting. The wheel system is throwing a wrench into my plan to do a little local file hacking. Now these have got to be files here, right? So let's take a look inside of them. Vim black.py. That could be it. And uh, then black d.py. Similar thing as uh, this has got to be the code. So there's a chance we can do this, this hack after all. So I'm going to be looking for something uh, line, line length header, line length header. We want to see a number coming near line length. It's coming in perhaps from uh, X line length uh, request headers. So interesting. Let's look at that other one, see if there's any hardwired numbers in there. Oh, there it is. Look at that, 88. Let's see if we can hack this thing. Now, there's downsides to this. Editing things in site packages is generally a bad idea. So site package awareness, right? Finding site packages is a big thing in itself, the different kinds, and the fact that every edit is going to be overridden. Let me, you know, let me put that in here. Every edit you do in site packages will be overridden with a pip install hyphen hyphen u right anything with a hyphen u is going to put the new version of it in there so i'm not exactly showing you the most copathetic things in the world to do but we're going to do it before and after because this is a potentially very powerful video you'll remember that when i had this all on one line And I just hit enter, it reformats it, it puts it right back there. That's the magic of this magic, of this Jupyter magic extension. So if I restart kernel and clear all output, it's no longer in memory. If I go over here and change 88 to 100, 
hundred characters long, there's a very good chance that, that is what gets loaded in memory when I do this. And then when I reformat this block, again, we're going to want a before and after. If I were in Vim, I would just hit Shift J or J to do this. I run that, and there you go. It did not rewrap it. So I'm going to be able to use, you know, pretty impressive uh, automatically stepping in uh, black. I guess it's NB underscore black linking. When you go Googling this, what I'm showing you is NB underscore black. And the stuff you learn about here is going to be this, uh, this extension I'm using and how to install it. But it's uncompromising and currently supports no parameters. Uh, that's the whole point of black. It's uncompromising PEP8 enforcement. Uh, but when you know how to hack a little, you can change a number in a file knowing that's going to go away whenever you do a, a pip install update and be black. But that's okay because for the while I'm using this, it's going to be exactly what I want. Lots of PEP8 enforcement, but without the... Uh, unnecessarily gratuitous line wrapping on things I'm trying to keep on one line. I could in truth make it even shorter. There's things I could cram together here. You don't need space between operators. And the black is not fixing that. Sometimes it likes to fix that stuff. I could use variable names that get expanded and all. But this video has gone on for quite a while and uh, has done some uh, really good cleanup. Uh, we removed the, uh, complex code that occurred two places. We put it just one place. We redefined a function definition based on what path it takes through a logic gate. We demonstrated the h1s and h2 fem, uh, functions in memory on the Jupyter side. We demonstrated that same thing to be in effect here on the package side. We demonstrated running our packages. This is from when I didn't rename it yet. It's now SEOML. We demonstrated running our packages uh, from the command line as a command line tool. See? And getting the same headline outputs just as standard markdown. We acknowledge the fact that while trying trying to abide by PEP8 in some ways to not import asterisks, we uh, violated in, uh, in other ways, but in what I consider a much more minor way, a line that goes over 80 characters. It's only 95 characters. So to keep the line wrapping from occurring here, I showed you how to find your site packages in some different environments pointed out the difference between how that belongs to pip install and how the pkg directory belongs to conda and how conda has its own site packages separate from the site packages of your wsl your windows subsystem for linux it gets a little bit complicated but once you know where your site packages are i showed you how to do modifications how to edit how to edit pip installed uh, native Python code. This won't work for everything because the wheel system and a lot of other stuff now in the pip system puts compiled C code uh, right on your system like NumPy normally would have required a build, but now the binary is just plopped onto your machine. And so this hackability and editability of site packages is maybe a little lower than it used to be, but I really enjoyed using it in this case. And you can see uh, the power of putter. Remember that fig, figlet? The power of putter. We don't necessarily want to jump right into the next project of polling data uh, before we're at least this happy with what we're looking at here. And I don't see much more ways to minimize this code here. Some of the imports that are optional based on the pathway you go uh, might be a nice thing. There's no reason to import that credential stuff every time. It's only 
when you take a path like that. So I move it under optional. Let's see if there's any of the other imports that are of that type. Now, pathlib, we're going to use almost all the time, this all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's only the uh, connecting to external sources that is going to be uh, uh, fairly conditional. A big, big fairly conditional external source. This will be probably one of the more popular ones. Lost it from my copy buffer. The copy buffers are really fragile in Jupyter. And so that's, that's pretty much it. I'll uh, do a control shift R to uh, clear all the code. In fact, I'll do a control shift E to run all the code and I'll show you my, my standard release uh, system. So this runs to the bottom, you know, even having that figlet there has some purpose because I know the whole thing ran top to bottom. I'll be inserting some assert, assert uh, things here. Um, I won't do it right now, but that'll probably be putting testing in here because I've got linting uh, and I get testing for free with nbdev and I get CI, continuous integration and deployment, for free with nbdev. And those are two things that are actually kind of sort of going on here as I use those nbdev tools, but I haven't shown you that much. And this will um, be a solid template for projects moving forward. So now, cd dot dot, it's better to do these things from that top github repo folder or git repo folder clear nbdev clean nbs that cleans our notebooks nbdev build lib it's a singular lib nbdev build docs i didn't really make much changes to the docs but for the sake of completeness. Okay, there's some stuff that didn't work because of the way it imports. Oh yeah, last call. The changing of the file name might have done that. So I've got some things to uh, look at on the building of the docs, but that should not be neither here nor there. If I do a git status, we'll see which files have changed. I've changed really an awful lot since my last uh, git commit. I'm gonna do a git diff to make sure that metadata is not polluting too much with the changes. Sometimes things look like metadata, which really aren't. And you go, oh no, that's that's really the right code. But here's definitely uh, no yeah, cell type. Yeah, a lot of stuff getting inserted that looks like metadata. So the way to handle that is to um, uh, do another notebook clean. It really just doesn't seem like that should be in there. Again, we look for the metadata. Fair amount getting in. I'm just going to have to get better at using this. I'm not going to make the video longer and, and tie this up. I'll do a git commit. Uh, the main thing here is uh, added headline functions. Git push. And you know what? On PyPy, as a, just a final bonus, O off on PyPy, it's up to version 0 0.0 0.3, but from the changes I did uh, just now, it seems to me that I should do another release. I know to go down into dist ls cd seoml cd dist uh, cd dot dot clear ls oh i've never released this i'm thinking of other packages this is not oauth on pypy this is seoml which i have not released on pypy yet but i bet people would like it this is also something to be git cloned as a git template. These are my next logical steps. So 
I have some thinking to do. I'm going to be using these templates for myself on my own work. And I do believe that wraps up the video at a, at a pretty good stopping point here. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe. To subscribe.